Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Jay. Welcome to Jay's World. So let's talk. Whew. Okay. I tell you what, this has been quite a week in the world of entertainment. Uh, well, first of all, at the earlier part of this week, uh, we lost Kate Spade. Uh, she's world-renowned uh, fashion designer. She was very known, especially back in the 90s, with her handbags and her different fashions. Uh, I believe she even expanded her brand to, like, um, housewares and dishes and, and just things like that. I mean, Kate Spade pretty much became a household name for a lot of women around this country. Um, she um, unfortunately lost her life due to suicide. Uh, from the reporting, she was dealing with uh, deep depression. Her marriage wasn't going very well. And I, I know there's still a lot, a lot is still coming out with this story. And uh, she basically hung herself um, with, a, with a scarf. And uh, she left a suicide note to her daughter and just explaining to her daughter that she loved her. And also pretty much in the note, just told her daughter to uh, just ask your father why I did this. So um, it's very, very sad, very, very sad and very unfortunate. And uh, to the to my knowledge, they're pretty much saying that uh, Kate Spade dealt with mental illness. And uh, y'all, I, I, I honestly cannot talk about that enough. And I may even save that for another video or who knows, I may even touch on it in this one. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants right now. Um, next, a few days later, uh, Anthony uh, Bourdain. Uh, he was also, uh, he worked for CNN. I believe he did. Uh, he also used to work for the Food Network. He's the guy that pretty much traveled the entire world, uh, tasting and sampling different cuisines all over the world. He made lots of friends. And the thing that was very interesting about Anthony Bourdain, yes, it was a food-oriented show. And he loved, uh, again, like I said, you know, testing the different uh, cuisines around the world. But it was more than just that type of show. It turned into a, a life show, almost like a life lesson, if you will. He would make these different friends and different connections. And they would have different conversations. I mean, it's just... He was really, really, it was just a really good show. And uh, yeah, and again, he hung himself. Can you believe that? That's crazy. Within like two or three days, two major figures in the entertainment world both committed suicide and both by hanging themselves. Again, uh, to from what they're saying, you know, uh, Anthony Bourdain as well, he you know, dealt with mental illness. You know, it's, it's just, it's so serious, guys. I mean, t t take it from me. I mean, you know, I grew up in the household with a family member that suffered from mental illness. Of course, we didn't understand what it was at the time, you know. And, and you know, so we, you know, pretty much just, hey, you know, you know, we just, we just brushed it off and we, we just didn't make, Make, we, we just couldn't make sense of it. So uh, mental illness is very serious, guys. And I just want to say, um, well, for, first of all, my condolences to the families of both Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. This has got to be just super duper tough for both of these families because not only did they lose their loved ones in an untimely way, but the way they lost their loved ones. Because unfortunately, with suicide, what, what can you do? You there's no way in the world they can ever truly find out exactly what was going on in their minds at at the time when they decided to kill themselves. Uh, it sort of reminds me of way back in the day, in the 1990s, when Phyllis Hyman, the great Phyllis Hyman, committed suicide. Yeah, I, I'll never forget that day. I was working retail, and... Um, it was like, I was like, oh my God, I was working like a double shift or something. Like, I was, well, I actually, during that time, I was a retail manager uh, for a store that is no longer open. And uh, I remember that day, I, I came home, it was about 11.30 in the evening, I stopped at like White Castle. And, <laughs> and for those of you that are not from St. Louis, White Castle is like a St. Louis classic. We love White Castle here in St. Louis. Y'all can keep them Crystal Burgers. You know, I used to live in I used to live in the South. I used to live in Atlanta, and I know about Crystal Burgers, but mm, 
they ain't got nothing in White Castle. But anyway, that's an, that's another <laughs> that's another subject. But getting back to uh, my story here. Uh, but anyway, I had worked a, a pretty much a long shift, and I uh, came home. I was so tired, and I had my White Castle laying laying across my bed, and I turned on the television just in time for the newscaster to make the announcement that Phyllis Hyman was dead and she had died due to depression and suicide. <sighs> y'all, when I tell y'all that broke my heart into pieces, oh my God, I loved, I love Phyllis Hyman. I mean, I, I mean, even to this day, I'm still a Phyllis Hyman fan. I mean, meet me on the moon. Just, oh my God, just hit after hit after hit prime of my life. I mean, this woman was just amazing. She was a tall, beautiful woman that stood about, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Phyllis Hyman was about six feet tall, flat feet, <laughs> flat feet. She stood about six feet tall and um, a just beautiful statuesque woman. I mean, she actually used to model back in the day before she even became a famous singer. And I mean, just what Phyllis Hyman could sing you to tears. I mean, you could just feel all of the emotion and everything. Every you, you felt every part of her soul whenever this woman opened her mouth. And the fact that she killed herself because she was depressed, and she and she also left a suicide note as well. I remember it was saying something to the fact that um, she just couldn't take it anymore. She was just so tired of suffering and uh she she uh yeah she committed suicide it was like right before one of her shows in new york and they pretty much you know found her dead and uh yeah so it's so sad it's so sad and it's just this whole i just want us as a country to start having more open and honest dialogues about mental illness Y'all, so many of our family members are walking around. Some of our family members, friends, co-workers, you name it. People are walking around with deep, deep mental issues. And, and, and they're just pretty much suffering in silence, you know. And see, and there's such a bad stigma on mental illness because so many people think, you know, when they hear mental illness, oh, it's somebody... Sh Swinging from the chandelier or you know, something just crazy and ridiculous. No, that is not mental illness. Mental illness comes in all shapes, forms, and sizes. There are people that are mentally ill that are actually functioning in society. You can actually be a functioning person in society and be mentally ill. You know, I, I personally believe we all have some form of mental illness. You know, I mean, if if you if you're feeling depressed on one day, that's a form of mental illness. Now, will you get better? Will you snap out of your depression? Of course you will. Some people don't, but you'll snap out of it. It's almost like having a stomach ache, you know. I mean, all stomach aches or headaches aren't going to last forever, you know. So we all have some form of mental illness, you know. Some just more severe than others, you know. Some people that get depressed never snap out of that uh, uh, that fate. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, I had heard that. Uh, no, actually, I do know that Phyllis Hyman, she had suffered from uh, bipolar uh, syndrome. And uh, that family member of mine um, that I spoke of earlier, um, she as well, she suffered from bipolar uh, syndrome. And it's, it's very serious. And uh, like I said, I, it's, I don't know what we are going to do as a country or as a people or even as a culture to um, help our loved ones that are suffering with mental illness, but at least we can start with conversations because we have to talk about it at least if nothing else, because it's not going anywhere, y'all. It's not going anywhere. And ignoring it is not helping anything. You're definitely, you're definitely not helping your loved one by just turning a, turning a blind eye to it and pretending, la, 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 no, no, that's not my child, la, 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 no, no, that's not my husband, oh, no, 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 that's not my wife. Yes, it is your husband, it is your child, it is your wife, and it could very well be you. It could very well be you. But we've got to start talking about it. We can no longer not have conversations about mental illness. So, um, yeah. Again, um, that's all I got on this, y'all. 
You know, like I said, it's just very, it's very, very sad. And if nothing else, the, the deaths of these two celebrities have once again opened us up to having some conversations and some dialogue about mental illness, much needed talk about mental illness. Let's just hope and pray that we can finally get some things done. So, um, yeah, you guys, thank you so much for uh, watching my video. Uh, please um, share this video if you will. I would love for you to do that. Uh, please um, hit the like button. Please give me a thumbs up. Um, please hit that bell down in the corner so you can be down with the notification squad. And uh, yeah, guys, so um, thank you so much. You have a great day. Talk to you later.